Hey YouTube, it's J.P. Dillon, a.k.a. Jordan. I'm going to cover today what everyone's been clamoring to get my attention on, and that is the modifications to the XB700. The most common one they know of, or I know of, is called the sub-bass mod, where you supposedly achieve a greater low-frequency response, uh, which is debatable, but nevertheless, I'll cover it anyways. The second is one that I came up with, which I like to refer as the neutral or the hi-fi mod. Now I like the XB700s because they're lightweight, they're incredibly comfortable, and they can be driven easily by portable devices. But out of the box they lack one thing, and that's mid-range. they got lots of deep end, they've got lots of top end, but nothing really in the middle. So things like vocals, piano, uh, stringed instruments really aren't that clear. So what we're going to do is first cover the sub-bass mod. Uh, which you may do so at your discretion. However, once you do it, there's no turning back because I haven't found somebody yet uh, that was able to put the uh, materials back in that you take out because they uh, kind of get destroyed when you take them out. Uh, so what let's do, uh, it's pretty much like changing the cushions and then going a little bit farther. So I'm going to remove the cushions and pull an ear cup apart and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. And if you can't remember, just so you know, the screws to release the cushions are down in there. There's only one. Look for the one that has kind of a, a mountainous hump around it. And then uh, the cushion will twist in one direction to the lock point, which you can pull it off. Just a reminder, if you're still unfamiliar, watch the video on how to replace the cushions. And when you get them apart, this is what it looks like. It's got those big 50 millimeter drivers in them. And really what it comes down to is that around the perimeter, there are screws. The camera will focus. That would be awesome. Anyway, you can see screw there. One up there in the corner. And another one down there. Those are removed to take the ear cup out. And then for God's sake, be careful because the wires are really, really thin and flimsy on these inside of the ear pieces. And uh, it's not uncommon for them to die. I'm trying to find a good light source here. I guess that works. So let's get the ear cup off, and then I'll show you what we'll be doing. All right, so here's the ear cup itself. And that white stuff you see there, around the edge here, that is a diffusing paper. Um, it has a very, very tight weave, but it still allows air to pass through. That's a tuning apparatus, uh, which helps control the bass by limiting the amount of air and travel that the driver can utilize. Uh, to achieve the sub-bass mod, we remove this paper film, which will then uh, essentially unlimit the air pressure behind the driver, causing it to move more and therefore create lower frequencies. But a word of caution, uh, I tried that and it made it excessively bass heavy. And I mean like deep, boomy, muddy. But if you want to do it, do it. It's your headphones, it's whatever. Don't remove this. Uh, that is a dust cover to keep junk out of the voice coil gap. I would recommend leaving that there. That also controls movement, but it won't make as big as an impact as the stuff covering the actual diaphragm. Uh, also, there's another tuning apparatus, which is here, this felt pad that's covering the vent. Um, that does two things. That reduces ambient noise, and it also uh, creates kind of an acoustic dampening. The way that these are tuned is entirely by limiting the uh, movement of the diaphragm. And what you'll find is, is that if you cover this hole uh, with like electrician's tape or something, um, you'll basically destroy most of your bass response. So I wouldn't recommend doing that either. Uh, unless you l use these for a lot of spoken word or books on tape or something. So anyway, what we're going to do is using a very sharp instrument uh, like an X-Acto knife that has tape stuck to it. That's pretty awesome. Using the X-Acto knife, making sure the blade is sharp, we're going to very carefully peel away that tape. And like I said, very carefully, because if you puncture the driver, uh, 
that's going to suck to be you. So I'm going to put the camera down and peel it away and then I'll show you what the back end of the driver looks like. So here's what it looks like with the paper removed. You can see the vent side and right behind the vents is the uh, diaphragm. So if you want the big chunky super base mod, this is where you stop. And you simply reassemble it, put the cushion back on, give it a listen and see what you think. Again, my opinion, I wouldn't do it because it makes it really boomy. So now what we're going to address is doing a more linear or hi-fi mod to it. Now what that involves is adding dampening to the speaker. The paper stuff that you peel off of here is very restrictive and they use a certain type of material to limit travel. We're not going to put this back in. That stays out. However, what does go in uh, is padding. Now, you can experiment with different kinds of stuff. I've tried uh, polyfill, uh, which is a mess. I wouldn't recommend trying to do that. That's just an utter mess. Uh, then there's fiberglass uh, from speaker enclosures or something like that. Wear gloves, and you can mess with that. Uh, there's also... Uh, polyurethane foam, like upholstery foam, you can mess with that. All of those materials will yield different results. However, what I have found to be the most useful thing is this stuff. Now you'll say, oh, it's just uh, uh, fiberglass insulation. Well, no, actually, this is rock wool. And rock wool, uh, in the hi-fi world, is a hybrid substance that was used in acoustic research speakers in the 1960s and early 70s. And uh, people hate this stuff because it would outgas little bits of acidic vapor that would, over time, and I mean a long time, uh, kill the exposed wire around resistors inside of the crossover, uh, which really means they were just too lazy, lazy to replace them. But it's a great dampening material because uh, it's very thick, it controls air well, it doesn't have those little fibers that get stuck in your skin like uh, fiberglass does, and it's easy to use. However, obviously the problem is where the hell do I get it? Well, um, you might ask Larry Lagasse of Vintage AR Parts and Service in New York. Uh, he may have it. Um, the other thing is obviously find somebody that's got a dead cabinet, like an old AR-2 or 3 or 4 or whatever, and just pull the stuff out. Use whatever you can, then sell the rest, I guess. Um, this is about really all I have other than maybe another piece or two of it. But really what we're doing here is we're cutting this to fit in this area here. And the purpose is, is so that when everything is cinched down, uh, this provides the dampening for the air seal which slows things down uh, to the point where it's not absent as far as low frequency, but it's also not booming. And this stuff tends to work better than the original paper thing. So I'm going to cut it down best I can, and then we'll install it so you can kind of see how it looks as a finished product. So there it is, all tightly packed in there. I essentially put enough in there to cover the entire back of the diaphragm and also um, put enough in there so that when I cinched everything down there was just the tidiest, tiniest little bit of compression. Uh, that's kind of what you're going for. And you won't be able to really tell the difference uh, after you just test it, but when you put the cushions on that's really the factor because again it's all about an acoustic seal and air control. So go ahead and repeat it with the other side, and then put it back together. And so I'm going to do the other side, and then we'll reassemble. Okay, so now we got both sides finished here. You can see the little bit of dampening sticking out on both sides. I'm going to tuck that in a little bit more before I put the cushions back on. And then we'll reassemble it and do a final test. 
All right, so they're all back together now. I gave them a quick test. And they sound pretty much like I want them to sound. A little bit more mid-range, but otherwise the overall clarity of the bass and treble are preserved. I tested them with my control, which is one I had done previously, uh, with uh, the left ear cup on the left and the right ear cup on the right and vice versa. In uh, mono signal, they both sound the same as each other, so I did good. Again, this is something you can play with. And if you somehow manage to preserve the old uh, contact paper with the driver getting it off, if you hate the way either sounds, you could always revert back to original, but just be really careful about removing that stuff because it likes to tear and come apart. So I hope this video was uh, informative and uh, helps you in modifying your favorite headphones, or at least one of my favorites anyways. So uh, let me know your thoughts, give it a shot, see what you think. Is it better than stock? Is it worse than stock? What mod did you use? And uh, how does it work out for you? Anyway, thanks guys for watching the video. Hopefully this was useful to you. More stuff to come soon.